What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through tonight's MLB slate. Coming off kind of an ugly one for me. Not a, not a great night. I took some big chances, and there wasn't a whole lot of scoring or anything to go on. I mean, it was one of those nights you definitely did not need to stack anything. Um, I say this every day on these small slates. I just think it's actually becoming strategically wrong um, on the small slates. On the bigger slates, I have no problem with it, especially if spots stand out. But when you have nobody above like a 4.2 run total, just something generally I think we should watch out for. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to we're going to go through like we usually do through DraftKings, and then we're going to we're going to build a few lineups on Saber Sims and, and Saber Sim and just show show you some things. Um, Sheets, uh, you did a little better than me, so let's 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 see how you did it and uh, tell yeah, us. Yeah, so it. so what I did, we talked about this in in the Discord, was that I played um I played free uh free Gallon and and Lopez as my top my top pitchers, but then what I did was I took little kind of direct leverage against kind of all of them, and when you get like a a um a, a a low scoring slate like you had last night. Um, that's sometimes all you need. Like, so this, for example, this was the, uh, the 88 I was in or whatever, like this one, I had the chalk pitchers, but this one faded Pablo Lopez. And I got a, you know, I got a couple of, I got a home run out of, uh, yeah. out of Peralta and that's pretty much all you need. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So, so I got a couple of Arizona guys in there and then I also faded some Bassett by going directly to it, to Atlanta, you know? Right. So again, right. like, look, look, they didn't completely smash, but on a day like this where you didn't oh, need that much, day. Yeah. this is, this is really all you needed. Um, and yeah. this was in, in, um, on DraftKings and on FanDuel, I'm a little bit annoyed. I didn't do more of this. You know, we talked about Tampa, you know, quite a bit. And I guess I kind of got lucky that I got the right guys. So on this one, I had, I had, a uh, Diaz and, and Franco and, and uh, and Margot and who would have thought that the Margot and, and Diaz would both get, you know, home runs, I guess. Yeah. That's kind of <laughs> tough to project, I suppose. Um, and then I had the kind of two chalky Houston, but and Rasmussen didn't even get the six innings, but still was good enough for seventh. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so, right. No. Yeah. So, so in a day like this, uh, you didn't have to do all. You didn't have to do all that much, and that was my uh, my thing. So 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 as as Bobby was kind of alluding to, what we're going to do today is, and this is what I do for when I do my solo stuff, is we're going to go through game by game, and we'll go through our favorites. Then what we're going to do is we're going to throw, we're going to launch Saber Sim. And show you how to, you know, what the builds would look like. Um, and what I find something really interesting is how the Saber Sim builds either agree with or completely disagree with, like everything that we said, you know. So, right. th so, so it's going to be kind of fun to do. So I think we should start though with the game by game and our kind of just by analysis. Then we'll pause for a second. I'll throw up Saber Sim and then we'll then we'll, then we'll launch it. Yeah, sounds good to me, man. Let's do it. So let's do the game by game. Uh, we can start off with Minnesota and Baltimore. I'm just going to give everybody a heads up. Look, the, these home runs and the, and the my not stacking is not just me being stubborn or wanting something different. And I, today, tonight, I probably am going to be looking at four man stacks, except for Philadelphia, maybe Washington and Colorado. I consider those four, those three teams. But I, I really, I, I'm just, you're just seeing it more and more and more with these low totals because the weather's bad. The, it's cold everywhere. The wind seems to always be blowing in in most places. We're not really getting to that summer stuff later on in the season. It's a little different, but if there's not a standing out spot and there's other, I mean, Colorado obviously stands out today, but there really has been a lot of slates without standout spots, which is actually kind of fun to play those, but you're not going to score so many, like to get a five man stack to go off with the way that, in a way that they're limiting pitchers early in the season. And it mean, just means more guys pitching five or six innings. And then you've just got one guy, one inning each for just harder to win with stacks like that. So just throwing it out there. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of four twos and things like that today. I might throw in a couple five mans, but mostly I'm looking at the four two type situation. And right off the bat here, uh, you got Joe Ryan, who I can't argue against really. Uh, I think he's one of the, one of the top arms. I'm not, I'm not going to say he's a top arm. And I think that uh, you could make an argument, even though Zimmerman has looked really good. Uh, there's a couple of bats on like Buxton, uh, Correa, Sanchez. There's a couple of bats on the other side that I think make for a decent, like secondary stack. So that's the first, that's what I have in this game. Yeah. So for me, the pitching, I mean, to an overall slate view, I mean, there's one pitcher that really stands out, at least for me, and then a whole bunch of other guys I could pick from. And, and, and Ryan is one of those other guys that I, I could pick from. Um, so I don't have, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, not the greatest ballpark, but, but, you know, <laughs> obviously a good team to, to go it's up It's become a much better pitching park, by the way. Just is that true? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. They moved the fences back. They, okay. they, and by the way, the MLB has changed the ball this year. 
that's another thing that sort of we, we haven't really talked about much, but the ball right. is different. The, the home runs are way down. The strikeouts are up. Um, just keep that in mind. So just throwing it out there. Anyway, she's go ahead. But overall, I think Ryan's just kind of a secondary option for me. And I think that I'm going to, I'm probably going to stay away from the hitting. And, and that kind of scares me a little bit just because, I mean, you do want to attack Zimmerman uh, still. I don't, do, you, do we though? I don't know. That's a good question. You know what yeah. I mean? That's, that's what I was going to ask you. Um, I'm not really getting him to, to him too much. Um, so as long as I get the go ahead from you to not get to him too much, get to them too much. And I don't, I don't mind. I, I would go a little further here and actually say that I think Zimmerman is a really interesting play. Um, I, I do like, like I said, a couple of those bats from Minnesota, you, know, you can think about that. I mean, you've got a low run total here. You've got Zimmerman who in four starts has given up a total of two runs. Um, the K rate has been good. Not, not like out of this world, but more than a strikeout per inning. We like that. You have a really, really questionable Minnesota offense outside of the top three spots. I mean, you've got guys like Urshela, Kepler, and a lefty-lefty Sanchez, who, again, as much as power as he has, is a strikeout risk. You've got Miranda down there, who's young, although I actually like him as a, you know, he's a 2K guy you can use. But I just think there's an argument for Zimmerman at 6,100 to be on the list of, of guys we use, because those 20 fantasy points from a 6,100 guy are just as good as they are from a 9,500 guy, and he seems to be right around there every time. And this matchup isn't one that should terrify you, even though I like a couple of bats. So I just want to throw that out there. All right, uh, Yankees, your Yankees and Blue Jays here, Sheets. And boy, the Yankees and Blue Jays in a non-weather affected game with a closed dome, as least as, as of what I have right now, for them to have a total below eight, almost with whoever's pitching feels like a little crazy. Um, the Blue Jays are one of the contrarian, I don't even want to say necessarily stacks. You can, you can take a lot of different guys on the Blue Jays here at very low ownership. And I, I don't think, I'd, I mean, I, look, Tyon's a good pitcher. Uh, I don't think he's this, this lockdown you know, no way you can hit him type of guy. So I have a little interest in the Blue Jays and I, uh, Manoa is another one of those guys, right? He, uh, you, you know, people might get fr afraid. I think that he dominated the Yankees, I believe in this, in his starts last year. He was awesome against them on opening day in New York this year. And uh, Manoa should be one of those guys. Uh, absolutely. So uh, Manoa and some Blue Jays bats is where I'm at early in the day. Um, yeah, I definitely, first of all, I, I have Toronto as, my kind of tied there's like a group of 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 guys below the colorado game and i think toronto's in that in that group um pitching wise um i don't want to play talion and yeah i i agree with you manoa is 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 one of those guys i mean he's not my favorite but he uh he's dirt he, you know if you want to double pay up for pitching i definitely think that 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 is uh one of those choices um, not, again, not the greatest, not the greatest matchup, obviously, but you know, he's, he's certainly proven a couple of times that he can, you don't know, care who he's pitching against. Um, so, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, let's move on to Pittsburgh and Detroit and some actual weather concerns about Wait, I actually, I actually, just, Oh, I'm sorry. She's yeah, I got mean? angels in Boston. My, my fault. Yeah. Okay. Angels in Boston. Um, this is about as, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. You got a little bit of wind blowing in. It's 49 degrees. Um, the Angels certainly are reasonable to me, but I probably am going to end up avoiding this game from almost all angles. If Syndergaard wasn't scratched with the injury in his last start, I would probably take a shot on him at low ownership. But I think this is mostly a fade for me, this game, to be honest with you. And I, I certainly don't mind any of these Angels, but the prices are tough. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm sort of off of this. And a lot of it is weather, weather based for me, about 40% weather suppression uh, to power in this kind of weather. So that's a huge amount. So that, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this one. I'm probably going to be off of it mostly. Hey, can I ask you a question? When you say um, like 40% suppression of power, where are, are we getting, are we, is that a metric that, that gets followed? Yeah. I mean, are we, are we yes. quoting that from somewhere? Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't know. Uh, yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't make that stuff up. I, I wouldn't know how to. Yeah. I was going to um, say. It's, 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 it, it's, it's compared to other games and similar temperature in terms of the average games there. So actually it's at 32, 31.7% um, in this type of weather in terms of power suppression. The weird thing is the ERA actually, uh, pitchers tend to actually have pitched, uh, oh, sorry, that doesn't actually make sense. The ERA is, is about 15% better um, for pitchers. So for, for whatever that's worth, even though I'm not, I'm not especially interested in either of these pitchers. 
Yeah, if anything, like you said, uh, the angels are fine, but the pricing's rough. Um, so I'll probably end up joining you on the uh, on the pass train as far as this goes. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on then to the to the Pittsburgh and Detroit. What do you got here? I don't, I'll go after you. Well, I mean, w- weather, weather, just badness. I mean, if any, if anything, maybe maybe take a shot on the hitting. Uh, Detroit Pittsburgh. If you get if you get the go ahead, as far as the uh, the weather goes, but I mean I I I don't, I don't think I want to be messing with this game. Um. So yeah, the weather is going to be the the determining factor here. Uh, you do have a little wind blowing out. It's kind of cold in Detroit. Um, bad offenses, bad pitchers, bad bullpens, bad baseball. <laughs> there's something. There's something here though. If, 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 <laughs> okay. If, if the game plays, I, I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll have, I mean, Brian Reynolds at 3.3, kind of egregious. Yeah. Um, Austin Meadows at 3.9, also kind of ridiculous. I understand why part, some of this is happening, but I'm just saying, I think this is, this is actually interesting. Um, it's a great, it's a, it's a spot to take advantage of. I think if, 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 if we get a go a full go ahead, but as of right now, that game looks pretty sketchy. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold off until later to, before I decide anything. The Colt Tucker is okay too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You could, you could, you could, I could, I could make a good argument for stacking both these teams if, if we, if we know the games to go, because as bad as the hitting might be, the pitching is, I mean, Pineda and Wilson, you can get to, and the bullpens are both terrible. So I, I, I like the idea of if I was going to stack to try and take both these teams with a, a little bit of the edge to Detroit, but, but both teams, I think, are, are firmly in play there. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this again. I mean, I, Again, we got to watch the weather in this, but I don't, I, I don't see Detroit as, like you said, that much worse than a lot of these other teams. Um, no, no, they're right there, I think. Yeah, they're right there. So yeah. if, you can, if you get the go-ahead, maybe, maybe that's kind of a good way to go. Um, speaking of weather, what's the weather like in Chicago? <laughs> I'll tell you this. It has a six-and-a-half run total in this game, which is pretty damn low. So that lets you know right away that the wind is blowing in pretty big time um let me just take a quick look yeah it looks like about a 50 percent power suppression and uh, about a 10 percent boost for pitchers era wise um uh you got wind blowing in at 20 miles an hour with the 44 45 degree temperature so i i I honestly think if the weather stays like this you'd have to be a fool to to play any hitters in this game personally um it, it just doesn't make any sense on a 13 game slate why you'd ever play a hitter in this spot in my opinion um and I love, I, I thought maybe this was the pitcher you were talking about. I thought Kopech might be the guy. He, he might be. I mean, I think that, that, that he, that I had him as, a, as another kind of like possibility alongside of Brian. But if you tell me this weather is what it is, he's going to have to get bumped higher than that. So, so yeah, I, 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 I have him just as, just as good as a top guy. Yep. I think he's right there. Um, and I, I like he and Ryan both quite a bit, but I think that as it, given the weather, maybe I would give a little bit of an edge to Kopech, but I, I do like them both. And there's other guys who we'll talk about shortly. Yeah. All right. Uh, Cincinnati, Milwaukee, at least we get a dome here. You've got Woodruff, who is, I guess the obvious guy. Now he's probably is the obvious guy you're talking about, right? Yep. Um, Cincinnati, for those of you who haven't been paying attention this season has been, I think it's the, is, is it the worst start in the history of baseball or the second worst start? I can't remember. It's either a record. They were th- well. They went three and nineteen over their first twenty-two. Okay. Oh, it can't be very. Oh good. no, I think it's Baltimore. Baltimore started zero and twenty once, I think, or something like that. Did they? Okay. Maybe. There, might be, there was there was something about it where it was like a modern day. It was either second worst or tied or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's they're bad. Um, I don't think they're quite as bad. <laughs> they can't be as bad as they've been. Like obviously nobody can be because it's baseball. You just can't be that bad. But it's certainly hard to understand. It's, it's not hard to understand why. Yeah, they're three and nineteen. Woodruff is 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 definitely a you know an incredible spot here. Um, the ownership is going to be high. I think that's fine. Uh, I think you could make an argument for Male on the other side of this game. Uh, it's another one that's cheap. Like if you wanted to get different and play a Zimmerman Male type of lineup. I mean, Molly has got a five and a half K prop. He's 6,900. We know he's got, he's got stuff at times that the, we have a hit or miss offense with Milwaukee. Um, and Molly is, you know, he hasn't been himself this year quite, but he's had some tough matchups. This is obviously, I think a little better than the Dodgers and teams like that, that he's already had to face, but I, I don't think you need to do it on this slate. I, I do think that if you're not going to play any Molly or whatever, 
I do think that the Milwaukee is a low owned, you know, maybe a secondary stack. That's where I would have them. Um, I think they're interesting as that secondary stack in Woodruff. So that's, that's where I'm at on this one. Yeah, I agree. By the way, I think that uh, the Molly at 6,900 is, uh, might be worth a pun. You know, you know, who else might be worth a pun if that goes, by the way, is that Pineda at 5,800 in that Pittsburgh game. Um, it's just, do you want to play Pineda or do you want to play a guy, like Pineda who, I mean, he, he put up 20 fantasy points, I think once in his last two years, two or three years, you've got Zimmerman who's done it three or two or three times already. Yeah. 6,100. That's fair. Um, and, and they're both facing a similar type of poor opponent, but, but I, I certainly thought about the Pineda thing for a minute before. That's but, fair enough. Yeah. Um, uh, I think Milwaukee's a, is, 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 is reasonable. Uh, as a hitting option, let me see where I have them ranked. They're like again, they're just they're 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 one of those teams, you know. They're one of those teams below below Coors. Um, so I think that they're, I think they're. I mean, they're not my favorite, but they're certainly in in, in the player pool. Let's put it that way. Um, but it's for me, it's Woodruff to start off with, and uh, and unless you know, like I said, unless Joe Morgan and Johnny Bench are coming back from the Reds anytime soon. I, they're just, they're just not going to be doing much. Right. Yep. Um, all right. Let's talk about uh, Seattle and Houston. I think that Houston is going to get a fair bit of ownership, and I think that's fine. Uh, maybe they won't. It's it's one of those situations, right? I think Jordan Alvarez is one of the better plays. He's he's on fire. You, you could just Alvarez and Tucker have just been awesome, and then you make it Altuve and Bregman, and it, all of a sudden you've got a nice stack there. The problem is, I say this about Chris Flexen a lot doesn't tend to get just completely crushed. Um, maybe you don't need that anymore in, in current MLD, MLB baseball. So Houston is one of the legitimate stacks to me today. Um, I, I, I can definitely get behind it, even though I, I don't know if I'd go a five-man just because I may not be going that way. And I don't think Flexen is as bad a pitcher as people treat him like he is. I mean, this guy, all he's done is he, he's pitched deeper into games than ever. His last three starts, he's been six innings or better um doesn't strike out a lot of guys you know gives up a little bit of hard contact and uh that's basically what he does but I certainly like some Houston bats preferably Alvarez and Tucker and I like the Houston stack with no interest in anything else I think you could make an argument for Christian Javier it's just I get so worried about how many pitches they let these guys throw uh but he's definitely another one of the guys who's too talented for a 6800 price tag yeah that's what I was going to ask you about um uh, about what you think of Christian Javier because he's been you know, it's, it's my kind of guys. I kind of being, you know, eased into the season a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and his last, his last start, he puts pitch, you know, maybe 80, 80, 85. And you don't need all that much at this price. Um, right. So I, I, you know, you're building a pool in your, in your head of these guys, like him, Zimmerman, Pineda, you know, whatever it is. I think Javier, is right in there with these guys. I, again, that doesn't mean you have to play any of them, right? Right, right. But, um, but uh, I think that that's uh, he's definitely worth thinking about. Yeah, one of the few pitchers on the slate without a K prop uh, in this this morning, which is just and, kind of interesting. And before I, I forget, I, I actually don't not get into Houston much at all. Um, so we will uh, we'll see what that comes out. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious where the ownership ends up on them. I feel like early in the day they're always projected to be low owned, and then they always end up really high owned. So. Um, We'll see, but they are a better lineup to stack again with Altuve back in the lineup just makes the lineup so much better all the way through. I mean, you know, you, you get your, your McCormick who's been leading off batting seven. That's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot better down the seven spot. Pena, who I believe in batting ninth. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a much deeper lineup and they can definitely work their way through. So if they do get to flex in, um, could be a big game anyway. Uh, St. Louis and KC. Uh, Sheets, this game is like, it's basically a cross off for me just all the way around. Uh, Next. Yeah. Dakota Hudson is the only thing I would say is that like, he's, he's actually pitched really well and that's it. <laughs> but I think it's next. Yeah. Uh, this is a night where I'm probably going to be overweight on course. Uh, don't have a whole lot of other spots that I'm crazy about tonight. Don't usually play go overweight on course in general. I think you're going to see some high ownership on certain players Soto especially. Soto is going to probably be like 35% owned, which is kind of nuts, but it's also kind of nuts for the best hitter in baseball to be 4,800 in, in Coors. Um, so uh, Soto, Blackman, Hernandez, Crone, McMahon, those guys will probably get some ownership. 
but I don't think the full stacks are going to get, well, maybe, maybe it'll change as the day goes. It, it should change. I just think there's too many guys I'll take chances on here. I'll take Nelson Cruz at, you know, 3,700. I know he's been bad. Um, I just don't care. I'll cross everything out. And I have not been impressed by Marquis early in the season. Of course, this is probably the night he comes out and throws a gem. Another, you know, smaller slate like yesterday, I would have maybe gotten weird and talked about playing Marquis. Uh, as it stands, I think I'm going to be heavy on, on especially the Colorado side here uh, in this game. Yeah, I want to play Marquis, actually. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, just, just, okay. just, just because. Um, for, for all the reasons that, that, <laughs> that we sometimes like to play. I mean, he's a good pitcher. Washington's not great. Uh, Soto's ridiculously cheap, so he's going to be 30% on plus, right? Mm -hmm. um, and Washington and Colorado are going to be two of, the, two of the chalkier positions. And like you said, Marquis has been kind of hit or miss. You know, he has some good games, some whatever. You know, you pitch in course, sometimes you get like that. Yeah. Um, and again, we're building these pools, you know, of, of pitchers. Uh, team Marquis, I think it's kind of sick to say, but like, I almost want to say Zimmerman's kind of safer than Marquis. You know I mean? like, oh, I like think you, right. If you want to compare those, just because of the hitting environment in Colorado, right? right? Um, but I, I, I would try it. Um, I, don't, you know, I don't know if I'm going to end up actually doing it at the end of the day, but I have no problem taking a shot. Um, I definitely have both these hitting, both these teams rated as the top two hitting teams. So I agree with what you said. I, mean, I want to be in a way overweight on Washington and overweight on Colorado as well. Um, and I have no preference between the sides, whether it be Washington or Colorado. I, I think I prefer to play Colorado um, just because I'm a little, you know, let's look, I'm a little scared of Marquis just, just, just doing enough where Fetty, I, I'm not quite as, as worried about. Um, although Fetty has put up some decent games also, I have no problem. I have no problem attacking him. So I like, uh, I like both sides of this game. Yeah, same. Um, I, I'm going to mention, though, if, if you have any interest in playing Marquis, one bet I'm, I'm definitely into is the his K prop is three and a half. Oh, that's low. That's insane. So I, I actually have a few K props. I, re I really like Zimmerman's at four and a half. I like Kopech at, at five and a half. And I like wow, Zimmerman can really strike guys out, huh? I, I don't know what who you think Zimmerman is. I feel like you, yeah, I guess he's, not. you're getting mixed uh, up with a, def a different Baltimore pitcher. All we've seen is him look really good so far. Um, yeah. He's got a four and a half K prop, and the only start he didn't get more than that was the first start where they just limited him to like sixty pitches. Um, is he the same guy that used to be on Washington? This is a different Zimmerman. No, that's Ryan oh. Zimmerman. You're thinking that's a hitter. Oh no! Oh no! Maybe I don't know. I, I see. See, I seem to recall us going attacking Zimmerman quite a bit. But no, we do. We we, we have so far this year because he's. Well, I mean, this year I've spent the past couple of years. Okay. I don't even know how much Zimmerman's pitched in the past, but okay. I'll double check that. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so there was, okay, so to Tampa Bay, Oakland. Uh, this is another spot where can you can you play Yarbrough at fifty six hundred? Yeah, but do you do you really want to make that your play? <laughs> like he, they I said, he's, they said he's capped at seventy five to eighty pitches, which is which is fine. Which is fine. It's totally fine against this Oakland team. Yeah, I mean, I think he's a little bit worse than the Zimmerman. Another one who, if you, if you like him, just bet the three and a half K prop. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, that's what I would say. And and I am sort of surprised at this total. So um, I'm giving away some of my stuff today, but I, I like the over. What is it, seven? Was it seven? Seven, exactly, yeah. I, I like Tampa for what it's worth. Uh, that's that's another good get weird one for me. Uh, don't I like think, that. I like, the, I like Tampa. Yeah, I think, I think that there's, I mean, you got, you know, Blackburn with a bad bullpen behind him. It's a little bit warmer today in Oakland than it has been so far this season. So, you know, we've got that going for us a little bit. Three and three and a half, 3.6 runs for Tampa seems too low. Um, I, I just feel like this is a spot where you could try and get a low owned stack uh, pretty easily now. They're, and their prices are going to make people not want to play them as much. Maybe like you can include Harold Ramirez if you want a cheap guy or Kiermaier or Margot. But your other guys, you know, the main guys being Wander, uh, Low, and, and or, or Rosarena. But I, I, I like the Tampa thing. I think I might do some of this tonight. Uh, Go right back to it after after last night. I think that they can they can put up a number here. So I, I like them at 69 degrees, a little bit of wind blowing out, pretty humid in, in Oakland. Seems like a good spot. So I'm I'm okay with it. And I also just want to point out just the, the prices on some of these Oakland guys. Chad Pinder, if he leads off at 2K, I will absolutely play Chad Pinder if he's leading off today at 2K. Um, I I still I mean the guy still has some power. He had you know good hard hit rates when he actually makes contact. 
occasionally a stolen base upside. We'll get to face a lefty for part of the game. So I, I don't want to stack these this, this whole game, but I do like Pinder as a two as a two K punt and Piscotti you could include as well. He's two point five and should be batting cleanup. What's the weather in Chinatown tonight? It's going to be cool. It's 64 degrees. I already checked it. Um, is, I it don't, is, it, is it an Urias day? Yeah. yeah. Like the problem is it's just the other guys, but I have Urias rated something like just be, like I haven't just beneath the, the Ryan Kopech Woodruff. Yeah. Guy. That sounds, that sounds, sounds reasonable though. I mean, I, I got no problem with that. Yeah. I mean, he's in all fairness, he's the best pitcher of all those guys by pretty good amount, but at this moment of his career, you know what I mean? Like, but it doesn't, you know, obviously that doesn't always translate to DFS and the strikeout numbers are a little lower this year. The Giants are not so fun to try and, you know, pitch against very often. But it's, you know, look, they have a 3.2 run total. You're playing in Dodger Stadium. It's Urias at 8,400. I feel like it feels like a very reasonable play. And he's definitely one of my top five pitchers, uh, just trying to figure out exactly, the, you know, how far I want to go with each of them. And uh, for what it's worth, I will say his K prop is, what is it today? It's... Uh, Four and a half. I'll take that over also. <laughs> Urias over. Oakland. All right. Um, I got some bets today. Uh, 4.5. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that's too low of a number for him. So, oddly, if people looked at the K-prop, they probably wouldn't. I don't know. Now, the highest K-prop on the slate is on the other side here in Rodon. So, Sheets, you can get the guy who's been the best pitcher in baseball for fantasy at almost no ownership and look it's the Dodgers okay I'm not going to stack the Dodgers against him uh you could make the argument for the every night Rodon is the real deal and he's exactly the kind of pitcher that the Dodgers tend to struggle with you got the you know the the the, the control lefties who have great breaking stuff but something just feels weird about not really loving that much on this slate and then not having any interest in either Rodon or the Dodgers and I feel like either one of those are the kind of plays that could make you win a tournament. Maybe not the Dodgers stack, but maybe as a secondary stack, use two or three guys. I don't think I'm going to do it. I don't think I'm going to end up using Rodon, but I don't think we should just cross out Rodon if you're multi-entering, especially when you have the guy who's been the best with the highest K prop on the slate against anybody. That guy should should have the ability to, to, to I mean, look, if he's if he's got it going, as long as the Dodgers don't have bad nights also. So I, I'm just sort of stuck with this one a little bit. What are you, where are you at with the Dodgers? I don't, I don't need to play 10K pitchers against the Dodgers. I don't know. Fair enough. But if nobody else does it, <laughs> again, I mean, he's projected to have the highest score on the slate of any pitcher. Oh, no, no, no. Woodruff is. He's bare, Woodruff and him are almost identical. And yeah, he's going to be one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh is owned. And he's got a higher K prop. I don't know. Just interesting. I don't know. Want to throw, wanted to throw it out there. Um, my guess is a few sharp people will end up getting, it's, it's probably one of those where he's like 3% owned everywhere else and maybe like 10% on the, well, actually, I don't know. People will look at game logs, so I don't know what, where he'll end up. All right. Let's talk about some Saber Sim stuff sheets. So, so I pulled up the, uh, the true DFS uh, interface where we have a uh, Saber Sim in, included here. And just to give you, you know, for those of you who might be looking for this for the first time, there's like a couple of things you could do with this. Okay. Um, so one thing that, that, that Saber Sim will do when it's working properly is it will populate not only its projections, but also the true DFS projections. And it will also, again, when things are, 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 are operating, right, it will show the both the SaberSim ownerships and the true DFS ownerships. Right now, it is not, for whatever reason, showing my own our, our ownership, my ownerships in there. I just sent a message off to Evan about that. But nonetheless, like one of the things you could do before you even build lineups, just kind of for fun, is you could start sorting these things to see, you know, what looks like good plays. So like, for example, like, you pull a picture and you can just say sort by value and it'll kind of show you like based on, you know, points per dollar, what the best good point per dollar plays are. And this is like another thing that you could do, you know, with, with Saber Sim and you can obviously do with our tables as well, but you know, some people just, you know, just didn't even know that you could do that. You could sort by percentiles or whatever it is, but let's just say that, you know, you just want to use it to build. Um, you, you, you know, you're going to select your source and let's, let's use the, the, the true DFS projections. Well, all right. And, and you know, again, there's one for, um, if you change this to SaberSim, this will change my projection to SaberSim. And if you change it to true DFS, it will change it to, um, which I think it would change to true DFS. Um, 
And then you take the average of them too. And these are the projections that you're going to use, whatever you select to build your lineups, right? Mm -hmm. And these ownerships and whatever. So what I'll do is I'm not going to make any changes to that. Okay. So let's build lineups. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a 20 max build. All right. So what that means is that SaberSim is going to preload their different sliders, meaning what it what SaberSim thinks is a good mixture of correlation, ownership fade, and variance for a 20 max build. Now you could screw with this if you want. Um, if you don't, you know, if you listen, here's something that you could do, by the way, Bobby. Like, so Bobby, you 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 believe that 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 five man stats have just not been getting there. You know what I mean? Like as much as the, as as they used to and and, and what's been getting there is more four mans and three mans or whatever. So what you could do if you wanted to is to go into manual mode and just and filter down this correlation slider a little bit. And this way you could still get the benefit of their of their of their juice, but but be more slanted towards not full five man stacks, you know, mm-hmm. like and that's like w- one place that you can do that. You can do it later also. But let's just say that we're going to keep it here. So we're going to start build. And again, all we're doing is we're just building it flat out with just the with the true dfs projections again it doesn't matter it doesn't matter really which projections you use is in baseball it's going to be somewhat similar so what it's doing now it's building 500 lineups um and the reason why it's going to build 500 is that if you want to make kind of changes after they build then it's already got those lineups all ready for you to be to replace with the ones that you have and i'll give you a good example of that um so we're through the 500 and it's going to pull pull all the lineups here kind of right here on the right in five four three two one so let's go all the lineups here before we go through individually what they are i like to kind of get an overview of what what it looks like so before we even get into what teams they give you it first it breaks it down by stack so this gave you 40 percent of your of this would be five threes uh 35 percent five twos 10 percent just straight fives and four threes and four fours then it's going to show you how it apportioned them. And actually it gives about 35% of your stacks to the White Sox, right? It's interesting, you know? Um, and you could break that down here, like what percent of your five-man stacks were with each, right? So for five-man stacks, actually the top was, was, was Kansas City or the Angels or whatever it is. And then what I'll do is I'll go and I'll check out the pictures and see how how what, what how they apportion it. It gave me ninety percent Woodruff, mm-hmm. and then it kind of like apportioned here, like thirty percent Rodon, twenty percent Ryan, twenty percent Pineda. And now if you want to, like you can go ahead and just freaking just download this, upload it to whatever you know, and just be done with it. Mm-hmm. But why don't we see if we can make some tweaks based on kind of what we. Mm-hmm. what we kind of like right so so let's 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 start from like the uh the like the stacks perspective right so so who is who uh, let's uh, for example like who's like your favorite stack you think i mean let's just say colorado I, I right know. so let's say so Colorado. and then you'll see by the way not surprisingly yeah. it gave you colorado. zero colorado right. right and the reason why is because you set up for and, and you know for a gpp it's going to do that but let's say you want to get a little bit more so let's say let's put minimum of say 30 percent colorado right you can just put it in there right away. You put in 30 and it automatically, boom, it redoes all the lineups, gives you 30% Colorado, repopulates everything over here. So now you got the 30% Colorado, right? right. And then you can go ahead, then you can go ahead and do that. Um, and let's take a look at say, at say pitchers. Um, pitchers, it's giving you 40%, uh, well, actually 80% Woodruff. And it's like, there any guy here that maybe you don't even want? Like, like do, 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 do you want any flex in at all in 20 mm-hmm. lineups? Right. So, like, and you know, even, even if you might, let's for the purpose of this, all you have to do is just, just uncheck this, boom, and then all the flex in lineups in, like, a second will just disappear. Everything will rebuild, and now you have, now you have all everything that you, that you said you wanted. Mm-hmm. So it's not as if like you're just kind of forced into doing whatever Sabreson you know creates for you based on projection. You still have a, a good amount of flexibility to kind of do what you want, you know. And then what you could do again is you could just take all these players and see if there's anybody at all that you have way too much of. Actually, it's not that bad. Sometimes what they'll do is you'll get like some 2K 
you know, I call him Lewis Brinson, right? But some some 2K guy that they'll just jam in 100% mm-hmm. of. So you just kind of have to have a little bit of sense to kind of look through. And it's only 20 lineups, so you're not you're not going to blindly put in anything anyway. You know what I mean? Right, you're going right. to kind of look and see what they say, look, see what they look like. Um, okay. But so according to like today's today's slate, you know, again, it's and this is really important that even though Colorado and whatever look to be the best sacks, if you're going to set this thing to have like ownership fade and whatever, and you're going to want to, and you get Woodruff, for example, at pitching, mm-hmm. you know, the, the optimizer and the Sabre Sigma is go is not, is probably not going to let you play too much of, of, Milwaukee, of Woodruff and Colorado, Washington. But one thing again, that Sabre Sigma is not going to let you do that. You could, this is why you could do this manually probably better in this situation is, well, who says I have to play the popular guys on freaking Colorado? You know what I mean? Like maybe right. I can play a one, three, five, seven, and it won't be as chalky. Then I could play freaking Woodruff. You yep. know what I mean? So again, all the, listen, Saber Sim is, is by far my favorite of these, but it's still just a machine. You know what I mean? It's still just a computer. So, so if, especially if you're only going to build 20, I would always upload them and look at them with your own eyes for freaking for, uh, for sanity checks before just blindly put put them in but but uh as we said uh, this is a really really good tool to take into account like all the stuff that we like to take into account yep um i i love it i love what you're showing there uh i, I do want to remind people early in the season things like this and, and it's true for all of these sites the one thing that doesn't get accounted for in my opinion enough when they try to the computer's trying to generate something that's going to be you know a little bit off, you know, off the board they're not going to account for the weather as much. Well, uh, and one of the, well, you know what? One thing you could do like really, really easily, right? Is you could just manually upgrade a projection a little bit right here. You right. Know what I mean, like if you think that 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 the Milwaukee game is going to be a good win, you know, better pitchers park than whatever, just just give it an extra point, you know, whatever, right. and just rebuild. You know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. or, or, or you know, uh, if, if you're getting too much of of a team or whatever, just x them out. You know, that's fine also. You can also, and this is a little more advanced, get Jordan on here. You can change the game total, like up over here, mm-hmm. and then check the, you can change the implied total. I don't want to screw it up by doing it wrong. But if you, but you could do that, and then everything will, will, will filter down. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so, so there's stuff you could do, you know, with the knowledge that you're getting from Bobby and, you know, other, our other sources about, you know, stuff that's maybe not as, in, not including the projections that you could, an umpire data, for example, like mm-hmm. if at five o'clock, you know, they, they announced that Alfonso Marquez or somebody's, uh, you know, somebody that, that, that is worth maybe a half a run, right? Mm-hmm. Um, then you can, then you can manually, you can manually change everything and it's still, so you can still get the benefit of what Saberson gives you and not completely just say, well, I don't have a brain. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's, that's, that's some of the battles that some that the people fight. But when you have this software and you can use it as a complement, right, or as a supplement to your, your knowledge, it, it does become a really, really powerful tool. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll be, we'll be covering more stuff like this. If you guys have any specific questions or thoughts or things you'd like to see us video, do videos on, please put it in the True DFS support channel. We are always happy to, to add that stuff there. And Sheets, I think that you did a really good job going through this. And uh, yeah, I think I think it should, it should you know it's it's fun to try it out. But if there's things that come up, let us know, and we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll answer your questions, and we'll help uh, help try to cater some of these shows to, towards more of what you want to see. So, Sheets, anything else before we uh, before we jump? Uh, yeah, you know I want to do one thing only because it came in. I, I'm, maybe I'll do it for another slide. You know I, I want to do want to do it now. Yeah, yeah, do, do it. Up. So I mentioned that 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 in this in this view. Sabersim will not populate our ownerships mm-hmm. right in the column right evan just came back and said that that's that they don't they haven't let us do that yet it's on their list of things to to yep. implement but just but just 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 so you know it doesn't mean you still can't use our ownerships with Sabersim. so what you what you'd have to do okay you go to our main site over here which is where all the projections are and what you can do is create this CSV file. And before I'll show you what to do, I'll show you what it looks like. So you download all my stuff, like kind of over here, mm-hmm. right? And then what you can do is then when you go back into, again, this is not that easy, but when you go into SaberSim, it will allow you, um, hold on. 
it will allow you to upload that file, which will have the, the custom ownership. So like here, we'll upload and then we'll upload CSV and it will be with any luck. And hopefully it's in the same thing it's supposed to be projections. And, you know, so again, this is not, this is not the necessarily the easiest way to do it, but um, it's better. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward it's, though. But it, but, it, but it is, but it is, but it is pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. So now what it's done is now replaced the Sabre SIM ownerships with the true DFS ownerships, if that's the one that you want to use. So right. it took me a total of 30 seconds to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so while we're waiting it to be more automated, it's, it's, as, it's pretty, it's pretty close to being automated. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. No, I think that's really helpful. Me and Mark went through that, but it's good to use a real example uh, uh, here for everybody. So, all right, guys. Well, good luck to everyone tonight. Uh, I will be live with you at 6 Eastern. Sheets, are you going to be available? I think so. All right, that'd be awesome. Um, and we'll uh, we'll definitely discuss a little NBA as well as we still have a, a sh just a minimal number of two-game slates left, so we're going to have to try and take advantage of it. Um, all right, good luck to everybody tonight, and uh, hopefully somebody else takes one down tonight. Good luck, everybody.